Salutations, I'm Jessico, and you're watching Game Dev Made Easy. In the last video, we talked about what the job system in Unity actually is and how it works. Today, we will expand upon the idea and actually take a look at how to implement the job system in Unity. This video utilizes JetBrains Writer. Writer is an IDE based on IntelliJ and ReSharper that was included in my subscription that JetBrains gave me for one year. Writer is cross-platform for Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. It supports the .NET Framework, .NET Core, and Mono-based projects. In other words, you can build .NET projects, Mono projects, and work with Unity in it. It has many features including code analysis, code editing, refactoring, unit test runner, debuggers, database and SQL, navigation and search, front-end technologies, and is highly extensible with plugins. Writer by itself costs $139 per year with a perpetual fallback license or $13.90 per month. Writer does require some setup before it works the way you would like for it to, but it is a great alternative to Visual Studio for cross-platform development with C-Sharp, JavaScript, F-Sharp, and Visual Basic.net. Warning! The information being presented is based off pre-release data. There is a high likelihood of the information becoming obsolete in the future. We can't just jump in and start implementing the job system. Unity Technologies would be making that far too easy. Instead, you have to install the correct packages for getting access to the job system. This requires you to utilize the Package Manager. Create a new project in Unity and call it Job Tutorial. It can be a 2D or 3D project, it doesn't matter. Once the project loads, it's time to access the Package Manager. To do this, select Window and Package Manager. You only see a few packages available at first. Click on the Advanced tab in the Package Manager window. It will give you an option to show preview packages. Select it and your list of available packages will increase dramatically. Select the package called Jobs. Once the job system package has installed, you will see an error appear in regards to a non-existent assembly being used. Navigate to the folder you saved your project to. The folder you want to select is the one called Packages. The only item inside of this folder is a manifest JSON file. Open it up to edit it. We need to add two dependencies to it. Underneath the dependency for jobs, we need to add com.unity.mathematics colon 0.0.12-preview.19 and also add underneath com.unity.collections colon 0.0.9-preview.11 Save the manifest JSON file and Unity will automatically download those packages. This will resolve the error. com.unity.mathematics is a library providing vector types and math functions that are used by the Burst compiler. More on the Burst compiler in a later video. com.unity.collections is a library that extends the collections namespace, which provides native list, native queue, and so on for us to be able to utilize. Now that the packages have been properly installed, we can now begin creating a job. First things first, let's create two class files. The first one we will call rotation job. This will end up being the struct we will use to define our job. The second class will be called Apply Rotation. This class will inherit from Mono Behavior and will call the job. 
double click on the rotation job CS file to open writer or whichever IDE you are using and we will continue on. Delete everything from the class. We are going to start fresh from a blank solution. Delete everything from the class. We are going to start fresh from a blank class. We will begin by adding our using statements. The first using statement is using unity.collections. This will give us access to our native container types. The second using statement is using Unity Engine, which will give us access to Unity types. The third and final using statement is Unity Engine.jobs, which gives us access to the job system interfaces we need. Write public struct rotation job with the colon signifying inheritance. We will inherit from iJob parallel transform. We are inheriting from this particular job interface because we want to directly affect the game object. Write public native array with the type parameter of vector3 and call it rotational axis. We do not use the read only or write only attribute because it is inferred that it will be able to be read and written by multiple jobs when left without an attribute. The only method we will write for this struct will be our execute method. Write public void execute with the parameters of int index and transform access called transform. This satisfies the interface's inherited member requirements. Inside of the execute method, write transform.localRotation multiplied by equals quaternion.euler with the parameter being this.rotationalAxis. In square brackets, write index. Because an array requires an index when being called in a singular fashion, we supply the execute method's integer value of index to satisfy the requirements and will allow for the job to call the number it needs depending on the execution step. This completes the job struct. Now we can move on. This completes the job struct. Now we can move on to the mono behavior class. Open up the apply rotation script and delete everything within it once more. We have four using statements to write first off. Write using unity.collections, then write using unityengine.jobs. The next using statement is using Unity Engine. The reasons are the same as before. The last using statement is using unity.jobs. This gives us access to job handle and a few other job items not in the Unity Engine.jobs namespace. Write public class apply rotation with the colon signifying inheritance and write mono behavior. This will allow for our class to be used in the editor and attached to game objects directly. Write private job handle and call it job handler. The job handle allows us to schedule, combine, and complete jobs. Next, write private transform access array and call it transform array. This is the job systems array of transforms. Follow it up with private native array with the type parameter of vector3 and call it rotation axis. We need to have a reference to the native array we created in the job struct. The last thing to do is to instantiate our job. Write rotation job and call it job and set it to be new rotation job. Write void start. We could use an alternative such as on enable, but it isn't required. Inside, write rotation axis is set to be new native array with the type parameters of vector3. 
Since we are instantiating the native array, we need to add two parameters to the method call. It takes a length and allocation type. The length will be set to 1, and we will set the allocation to be allocator.persistent. We want this to run throughout the lifetime of the application. Since we have set the index of the array to be 1, we don't need to loop through the array to set any data. Write this dot rotation axis with the index count to be at 0 is set to be vector 3 dot up. This will specify that we want the rotation of the object to occur at the vector value of 0, 1, and 0. The next item is to write transform with two square brackets to turn it into an array. Call it transforms and set it to be transform. This takes the game object we have and add it to an array. We will use this momentarily. The last thing we need to do in the start method is write transform array is set to be a new transform axis array with the parameter being transforms. This takes the singular game object we have as the first item within the array and places it into the transform array needed for the job. The next method we need to create is void on disable. This is an alternative to on destroy or on application quit. Write transform array dot dispose. This will close the connection to the native container used and prevent memory leaks. Write rotation axis dot dispose for the reasons previously provided. The next method is our update method. Write void update. We all know what the update method does by now. Inside, write job dot rotational axis is set to be rotation axis. This sets the contents of the native array we created in this class to be within the job structs array data. Write job handler is set to be job.schedule with the parameters of transform array and job handle. We are scheduling the job to run and specifying that we want the transform array to be run from the execute method from job struct with the dependencies of the job handler we created. The last method to create is our late update method. Write void late update. Inside, write job handle.complete. We want our job to complete after it had all the leaves in the jobs dependency tree to finish running. We have finished our code for the job struct and our mono behavior class. Now, we need to jump back over to the Unity Editor. In the Unity Editor, go over to the Asset Store. Do a search for Stylized Earth. It is a free asset and is a low-poly Earth 3D model, which will suit our project very nicely. Download and import the asset into the project. Click on the low-poly Earth folder. Drag and drop the low poly earth prefab into the hierarchy pane. Drag and drop the apply rotation script to the prefab in the hierarchy pane. The final thing to do for this video is to press the play button and watch the model spin. This was a very simplistic implementation of the job system but it should get your feet wet to be able to start utilizing it for more grandiose projects in the future. The job system isn't that difficult to work with once you understand how it is structured. Next time, we will get into the Entity Component System. If you like my work, you can subscribe to my channel, donate to me via Patreon, donate to me via Subscribestar, or even donate via PayPal to be totally awesome like Coburn and Kupala. I have a Discord server that you can join to speak with more like-minded individuals, and as always, 
Links for these are in the description box below, along with the link to the GitHub repo for the project.